By the authority of the University of Nottingham vested in my office, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa. Many congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that's very nice. I mean, I've, uh, you never know quite where you've been asked to do these things, but uh, anyway, it's very nice to come back and have two degrees now from Nottingham, so uh, with a 50-year gap between one and the other. I came here in 1961 and I studied industrial economics, which probably was one of the few courses like that in the country at that time. But probably the thing I learned mo most from was there was a dry cleaning, laundry and shoe repair service which was operating in the Portland building next to the barbers. And for some reason I, I got the job of running that for a couple of years. So, uh, so I learned a lot for that. Uh, I remember a bit about the six lectures a week I went to and I got a degree so it was fine. My great -grand grandfather started as a shoe retail shop. That's really what it still was mainly when I started, uh, when I was a shop assistant before I came to Nottingham here uh, in 1960. But we did, we had got a shoe repair business as well. And uh, we went through all sorts of strange uh, changes in ownership. We went out of the family, I bought it back. And then I got to the stage where I could see that the shoe shops were heading for trouble. So I sold them, difficult decision. And it was just the shoe repairs left. Uh, we had to add keys because shoe repairs, there just weren't enough shoe repairs going around those days. So that, that's been a declining market. So we did uh, keys that led to saying, well, what other things can we do? We did engraving about 17, 18 years ago. We started watch repairs and we do dry cleaning. Biggest part of the business now is photos because we have a, two other businesses, one called Max Spilm, another called Snappy Snaps. Uh, and most recently, the fast growing part of the business is uh, mobile phone repairs. We run our business rather differently from most. Uh, really started from the fact that uh, I discovered far too late in life, but at least I did discover, that the way to provide a really good service is to allow the people who serve the customers to do it the way they want. You can't produce fantastic service by making them stick to a lot of rules. The only way to do it is to let them show their, show their own initiative, do it their own way. And so that's really led to saying, well, I'm going to run the business by giving freedom to the people out there who actually take the money for us, but everyone else in the business is there to help them to do it as well as they can. And we've learned a lot of lessons on how to do that well. But the biggest lesson is to, it only works with the right people. So we have a big emphasis on making sure we pick people with personality. We got into seeing the employment of people from prison as being an important thing to do. When my son, my eldest son James, uh, who is our chief executive, was involved with the prison where the, he was organising a conference inside the prison. And he had to go the week before to set everything up. And the guy who showed him round impressed him so much, he said, here's my card, when you get out, give me a ring, I'll give you a job. But that guy called Matt is still with us. After 10 plus years, he runs one of our shops, has been doing for quite a long time now, very successfully. He is now married, two children, great success story. So we thought we could do that for Matt, we can do it for a lot more. Uh, and we, we've been going about it steadily for the last 10 plus years. We now have 400 people who are involved in uh, what we call our foundation scheme. A uh, hundred of them are in prison, in workshops, we've got training workshops and actual workshops, so they're all people who are doing a job in prison which we organise with the promise of a job offer when they leave an interview. We pinched a lot of ideas from other people like the holiday homes and everyone who works for us gets their birthday off and uh, we have a hardship fund to help people who get in financial trouble. Uh, but the dreams come, come true was just a uh, sort of quirky idea really, I just said one year, every month I'm going to make someone's dream come true, so you let us know what your dream is. It might have been going off to Australia to meet a relative we've never seen before or lots of requests to go to Disney obviously. Uh, we fixed someone's teeth, which probably didn't need doing, but that's what they really wanted. But a whole measure of things, so, so that's... But, but we like giving people surprises, nice surprises. Uh, because if people are great, you, you, there's nothing too, too good for them. You just want to love them for bits. If you're taught at university, you think the tendency is to suggest there's some sort of great process and a set of rules where you can work. 
life isn't like that. It never works out quite the way you expect. And you've got to actually do it your own way. And the most important thing to do if you're running a business is to pick the right people to have around you and trust them to get on with it.